I'm Yolande Poirier from Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here today at Javaland uh, with uh, Roland Haas. Roland, mm. hi. Hi. So, Roland, you are a software engineer, a console engineer? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's true. Tell, tell us a little bit about what you do. Otherwise. Okay. So I'm, I'm a software developer there, mm -hmm. and uh, we, I'm, I'm working for a company called Consul, which is about 250 people, and we are located in Munich. And what we are doing is mostly Java consulting, Java development, and I'm there, some have the role of an architect, of an engineer, so I'm coding still on, on my own. Right. And uh, yes, in the last year we have also something to do with, uh, with Docker a, a lot, and uh, yes, this is something which I have talked about uh, this morning here in the, in the conference. Yeah, it's my role. So, so, you, so mm. you have a presentation about mm. Docker, mm -hmm. and so how can uh, Docker really help uh, Java yeah. engineers? Yeah, the, the interesting thing is maybe I start a little bit about what Docker is, right? because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's Not probably well knows. known already, because Docker is really uh, quite a bust these days. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the special about Docker is that it's a, some sort of uh, container-based uh, virtualization. So it's a very fast and resource-saving virtualization mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, it typically comes from the admin side, so from the op operations side. But there's also quite a lot of benefits for developers. And uh, especially when it comes to integration tests and shipping applications. This is something where Docker can really help to, uh, to fix some pain points we have when doing integration tests. And yeah. Okay. So, okay, so it's really good for integration tests. Yeah, test. exactly. And so what other tools yeah. do you use yeah. also? Uh, so for integration tests, it's good because, you, you know, uh, good integration tests, uh, in my opinion, are robust. So they are really, they work all the time or fail all the time with the same, same fault. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's nothing uh, worse than a flaky integration test, which fails sometimes and doesn't fail the other time. And uh, another good characteristic of integration tests is that it's uh, self-contained, so that you can start integration tests without uh, bothering setting up external test systems and so mm -hmm. forth. And <coughs> important characteristic is also that it's isolated, so that if you run integration tests in parallel, the two integration tests don't disturb each other. So this is often the case mm -hmm. if they open the same ports and so forth, then it's, then it's hard. And for all these uh, uh, yes, pain points we have with regular integration tests, Docker can help because with Docker it is easy to really to make self-contained uh, mm -hmm. tests because uh, all the external test systems are put into containers and uh, fired up. And uh, also the isolation is nearly perfect, so each container gets its own ports and no, nobody is really uh, uh, influences each other. So this is this is really good. So for for integration tests, there's, at the moment it's really nearly a perfect match for Docker and integration mm -hmm. testing. Yeah. So then it's, it's, it's also easier to deploy applications? Yeah, is yeah. That that's true as well. So this right. is the second uh, big point which Docker offers for developers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason is that so in, in the past or up to now, we have also containers in the Java world. These are ear files or WAR files which we are deploying into application servers. But the problem is that when we deploy WAR files or ear files, then uh, the application server it's a, it might be a Glassfish or a Tomcat, so the execution environment is different for each of the uh, for each of the applications. And with Docker, you shift the boundary a bit because now you also put the, co the application server itself into the container, and so it's it's easy to have. Uh, so the developer have, have, has everything under control, so he can tune the application server, and this application server, which he puts on his own uh, notebook, uh, goes directly to the production system after going to all this. Uh, delivery uh, continuous integration pipeline. And so what could be circumvented that way is this uh, works for me syndrome. So if you, normally if a developer says, okay, there are some problems, say, oh, why problem? It works for me on my notebook, on my very 16 gigabyte notebook, but it doesn't work in production because the execution environment is different there. With Docker, you can, uh, you can really you, you simulate yeah, exactly. uh, any uh, yeah. environment. Yeah, you can really put the environment on the developer machine and put it directly yeah. the same way as the developer sees it yeah. uh, and with the production system. This is a very big benefit. So in the future, I, I think a lot of people are really going, instead of creating ear files alone and war files and hand it over to the operations team, they will provide Docker images, which mm -hmm. are then put into production directly. So. Of course, this also means for the developer to have more responsibilities because he also have to 
to tune or, or select the application server, select what, what uh, startup parameters uh, the application server will have. Mm -hmm. But at the end, it's, uh, it's really much nicer because you have a clear, clear abstract boundary for, for the container. Right. right. And then, um, so how does it help also in the build process? Or yeah, in the build process, so it's important. So you have all these benefits for application deployment and for the integration tests. But uh, what you, of course, want as a developer to, to automate it, to, to put this generation of the image and the starting and stopping of the creation test into your build process. Mm -hmm. And there are several ways how you can do it. So one way is, of course, you can tell your continuous integration server to start and stop all the Docker containers images which you are needed uh, need for, for integration testing. The other uh, technique is to simply call out the Docker commando commands from the build process with a system exec to the outside. Mm -hmm. But the most elegant way is to really to, to use dedicated plugins for your build system. So there are plugins for Maven, which is one very popular build system, and also for Gradle out there. So this is something which uh, where we also worked on. So we developed a Maven plugin, which helps all in this uh, integration testing stuff and this uh, creation of uh, Docker images for, for deploying. And uh, yes, this is the most powerful way. So and you've developed all of that uh, within your company, or is it? Uh, it's like open when, source. When it's for completely free. So okay. it's uh, the interesting thing is when I started and looked around because I needed something for my personal needs. So I had to, to set up a build system with Docker, and I looked around. There were no Maven plugin at all. So what? Of course, if I'm a developer, I, I simply start to develop my own plugin. But after then, I uh, researched again two months later or so. There were already four plugins on GitHub, and nowadays there are 12 plugins. Maybe um. Docker plugins, which, uh, which are in, in different states of quality. So some are really, really good. So one, I think it's fair to say there are four good ones. And, uh, and the other ones are simply was a uh, try, and they stopped developing the plugin itself. Okay. And, but the, but uh, you have, as a developer, you have now the, the choice which one you want to choose from, which one of these plugins. And I also made some sort of shootout. Docker Maven plugin shooter, which you can also uh, obtain from, from GitHub, where you can simply see how, how the plugins are, are working. So each of the plugins has a different philosophy, how they are configured in the POM, in the build uh, system. And uh, there you can really look and, and take that plugin which, which fits your purpose best. So. Great. But I highly recommend to choose one of the plugins instead of doing it on your own manually. This is really. There's a lot right. of benefit. There. And it's all open source. So it's, it's all open source. And I, I also take pull requests for my plugin, at least. So if anybody wants to contribute, I'm really happy. So we have a lot, uh, uh, already two or three guys which are really working all the time. Uh, not all the time, but, but they're, they're submitting pull requests. And, and we are really working on them and are very committed all the, to the plugin. So, so where, where can they find the plugin? It's on, on GitHub under RHUSS. This is my GitHub name. Okay. And there's a, a simply a repository called Docker Maven plugin and you can fetch it from there. And of course, it's on Maven Central as well, so you only have to configure it in your build system, and Maven will automatically download it to your local machine if you need to. Great, great uh, work. Thank you so much yeah, for okay. coming and, and okay. explaining Thanks. all of that to, to us. Thanks. Okay.